Are you tired of paying full price for miniatures for your tabletop games? Are you sick of getting hurt every time you assemble your models? Do you wish that there was a cheap alternative? Then try cheaper printing! It's just like 3D printing, but cheaper. But seriously, come along as we talk about 3D printing on the cheapest printer that I could find. Cheaper printing is not an affiliate of Pulse Games. For those of you who have watched the channel, you know that I love 3D printing. I love playing tabletop games, but I love being able to say that I was the one that made the pieces. Now, is painting a miniature, like making one, sure, it's pretty close, you know, but at the end of the day, you can say, look at what I've done. Um, but 3D printing is great because you do it from the bottom up. You know, you print it out, you paint it, you make it. That piece of art is 100% yours, you know, other than, of course, the design, unless you do that too. And then it is 100% all yours. Um, but as I've gotten into this hobby of tabletop gaming, 3D printing has just been something that I've loved doing along the way. And so I thought, well, let's get into this a little more. Let's share with the world how we went about it. Um, most tabletop games are expensive. There's no way around that. They are expensive, but with the amount of work and time and things that go into them, it makes sense, at least for some of them. <laughs> um, but 3D printing is kind of a way around that. Now, in other videos, I've talked about the prices of the printers and everything else, so we're not gonna get into that too much. But what I wanted to focus on today was the cheapest way to get into this. And so I went ahead and I bought the Voxelab Proxima 6.0. And what that is, is it's a 4K resin printer. And it cost me $90. Now, during the process of buying this, I had a little back and forth with the people over at Voxelab and they were quick. They responded timely. It was a good experience for me. But was the printer? Well, let's talk about it. So we're going to divide this into three parts. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly truth, or basically my results. Okay, so first to start off, the good. This printer is cheap. It is a cheap printer, and I have been printing with it for the past week, and I have not had one failure. Okay, most printers are going to do that. Most printers, most resin printers, if you take care of them and do things right, that'll be the case. But this printer has worked flawlessly since I got it. Um, it was cheap. The quality is fantastic. Um, the, the miniatures that you're seeing now are just some of the ones that I printed. I got a couple bigger ones too that I'm going to go through the process of. It prints clean. Um, an upside of this that I haven't seen in many other printers is that the pool, the reservoir that your resin sits in, um, it slides out. So all you have to do is unscrew the two little screws on the side and then it slides right out the front way. And it has honestly been a good little printer. Um, I don't know why compared to my other printer, it doesn't smell as much. That might sound weird. I think the fan doesn't pull it out as much as the other ones do. And so because of that, it doesn't smell so bad. And so I just have it in a room in my house with the window open and that's been enough. You know, I haven't had too many fumes going around and things like that. And so for a printer, in my experience with resin printers, it has been a very positive experience. Um, it comes with its own software for slicing. Slicing is when you put in a 3D file and it has to slice it into layers so that it can print it in layers because that's how resin printers work. And it comes with its own slicer program. It's a simple enough program. It doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles like some of the fancier ones like Lychee Slicer or Chutu Box. And we'll talk about that a little bit in the bads of this. But the, the slicer works easily enough. I've been able to put stuff in. Anything that's pre-supported went in just fine. Um, when you go into creating your own supports or the, own, the skeleton that makes printing possible, um, it gets a little more not as customizable as I would prefer, but for someone who's just starting out, 
it gets the job done and it does it well. And if you want to use Chitu Box, you can. You just got to do a couple little steps beforehand. But keep going on with the good. The quality is really good. Um, the supports have all come off really easy. Cleanup is not hard. I didn't buy any of like the magnetic plates or anything like that for it. I'm just, I'm going stock printer. I'm using just the stock printer settings and I haven't had to change anything. I don't think it's overexposing or anything like that. I think the print quality is fantastic. And for what I do, for mostly D&D and other things, um, it's worked great. The models are crisp, clean, and I'm looking forward to painting them all. Now on to the bad stuff. Um, the second you open this printer up and you look at it, there are some things that are a little strange. Um, the, the plate, the LCD plate that um, the light comes through, looks like it's held down with electrical tape. It even comes with extra pieces of that tape in case you have to remove it. Now, I say that's bad just because when you look at something, you don't want to see that, right? But on the upside, I lost a printer once because the resin spilled over and went down inside the cracks around the LCD plate. And with that tape there, it makes it so that won't happen, okay? It's easy to, to clean and swap out. I mean, does it look as good as some other machines? No. Because of that, I mean, it doesn't. It, it looks a little less. Does it work as good as other machines? I would argue that it does. And like I said, they give you extras just in case. And maybe that will make things easier for some of you who have had situations like I did where you had to scrap a printer because it got down in there, whereas you could have just pulled the tape up, put the new stuff down, and been ready to go. Um... Other than that, the only thing that I have to say about this printer is that if you want to use outside slicer software, and if you go on their website and pull up this printer, it will tell you that it uses Chitubox and that it comes with its own slicer. Like I said, the slicer it comes with is a good slicer. It's easy enough to use the Voxel Lab slicer. Not a big deal. If you want to use Chitubox, you can. And honestly, it wasn't that hard. I had to change two settings is all and um, basically the first one was I had to open up a file that chew picks how this printer will save something and I had to change the format to allow another one and I'll throw a link here from someone over at reddit who solved that and it was really easy I mean it's as easy as finding a folder opening it up in notepad which every computer has copying and pasting the text of something different and then saving it and then it has worked perfectly with YouTube Box ever since. I only use that slicer now just because I'm familiar with it and I like it. Um, and then I also had to change the X and Y. You just pull up the printer in the settings and you just swap their sizes and it works perfect. And I haven't had any issues other than that. Like I said, I've printed eight or nine different prints now and every single one of them has worked flawlessly with no failures, no supports that just went to nothing, anything like that. I haven't had to clean out the vat since I got it. You know, every, of course, after every print, I kind of feel around the bottom with my plastic spatula just to make sure there aren't any bits or pieces in there, but there haven't been. And so I basically print, pull off the plate, get the, the prints off the plate, put it back on and start my next print. And so it has been working quite well. But as far as the bad goes, those are the things that I will point out. But I mean, if you're buying a printer for $90, a 4K printer like this one, there's always going to be something, right? You got to expect something. And for me, those have been the only bad things about this printer. And they're really not that bad. So on to the ugly truth or the results of all of this. And they are simply this. It is a small printer. It's a six inch build plate. So you're not going to be building, you know, your giant titans, you know, your, your massive dragons or things like that in one go. You're going to have to slice them up into pieces. Most companies will do that for you, you know, so it's not going to be, it's not going to put a wrench in the works. It's going to work great. It's going to print the things that you want it to print out. And for $90, you know, to buy this printer and to buy the resin that I use for these prints, one kilogram of resin, you know, you can find for 20, 30 bucks. So you're looking at $120 for 
for this printer and I will print 50 to 60 miniatures for my D&D campaign. I will print enough stuff to last me for the year for $120, if not longer than that. And so to me, it's a no brainer. You can spend $120 on one model, depending on what you buy. But with this, you can print 50 models, 60 models. You know, if you're printing bigger stuff, dragons and things like that, a model that would cost you $120, you can print for 15 bucks. 20 bucks maybe you know even if that's if it holds uses a whole bottle of resin which it's probably not going to and so for me if you are looking to get into 3d printing if you are looking to use this for your tabletop gaming and stuff like that at 90 dollars what do you have to lose now could you spend a little bit more than that and get a better printer of course of course you can spend 150 dollars and get a printer rated way better and that's up to you to do all I'm here to tell you is that for a $90 printer, this thing works fantastic. And I have loved printing everything with it, and I look forward to printing a lot more with it. Now, at a 4K resolution, especially when they have 8 and 12K printers coming out right now, it's on the lower end. You know, and honestly, I had a 2K printer before this one, and I thought, ah, it's not going to be that big of a difference. But the difference was huge between a 2K and a 4K. The crispness and the details and the armor and the other things that I'm printing is incredible you know i've printed axes that are not even a quarter of an inch you know in size and you can see the ruins carved into the blade i print out yonti warriors you know snake warriors and you can see the scales on their tails even though the model itself is only this big you know and so is the difference between a 4k and an 8k printer a lot I would assume it's enough to matter, but is it enough to matter to you? To me right now, for the price difference, I'm going to stick with this guy until a cheap 8 or 12k printer comes out. And then I'll buy it and I'll let you know what I think. Until then, like, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try to be putting out videos once a week from this point forward about different things. I got a ton of stuff in the lineup that I'm excited to bring to you and to your table. And I hope it helps you with the games that you're planning on playing. Okay, and as always, don't spend so much time creating your world that you forget to spend some time in it. Till next time.